Okay, so for today's lab for the uh, synthesis of aspirin, we're starting with uh, salicylic acid and we're also using acetic anhydride with concentrated phosphoric acid. Uh, the procedure has you um, using a 100 mil uh, conical flask and you're using two grams of salicylic acid. I've already got that pre-measured. So we're just going to add that to the flask. And we're measuring out acetic anhydride. We've got five mils, and this is a one mil dropper. I'm just estimating since I didn't grab a cylinder earlier. So Okay, and after adding our uh, acetic anhydride and our salicylic acid, I'm plopping in a stir bar here, and we're adding 10 drops of concentrated phosphoric acid. So, I might have made a poor choice of pipette because it barely sucks it up, it's so thick. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and now, um, so after having added all of our reactants, we're just going to set this up for reflux. So we got our condenser, we're clamping that down. You'll see we've got our hot plate and our lab jack jacked up a little bit. Um, and we're going to have this stirring with a little bit of a little bit of heat just to help it dissolve. And you've done reflux before, so you remember how this goes. Uh, the water out is on top and just goes down to the drain. Water in is on bottom, going to the faucet. Snap it on. After you got the reflux condenser hooked up correctly, correctly, you'll just want to turn on the faucet like so, where you've got a steady water flow, and then you're just leaving the reaction stirring with heat, uh, low heat, for about 15 minutes. Um, afterward, we're just going to. Uh, lower the jack to take it off the heat and let it cool to room temperature and you would be able to uh, turn off the, the water flow to the condenser. Alright, so after we ran our reaction for 15 minutes, um, I turned off the, the water to the reflux condenser and I took removed the flask from heat and I let it cool to uh, room temperature. So we can take our Condenser out of the picture now, and I'm setting this up here where I'm adding some cold water to this with stirring. So we're stirring in the ice bath, and I'm adding, I've got 50 mils of cold water. And it tells, the procedure tells you to add it portion wise. It says over the course of two minutes. Not sure if we'll go that long. And uh, after our cold water has all been added, we're just leaving it to sit without stirring in the ice bath and just occasionally turning on stirring for just a moment just to mix the contents and then, um, then turn off the stirring again. 
Okay, after your time in the ice bath, um, you should have a significant amount of solid at the bottom of your flask. Hopefully you can see the solid in the bottom of there. Um, and the next step would just be suction filtration to collect the solid out of this. And uh, you've all seen that done before, done it yourself. So we'll, I'm not going to show that and we'll skip on to the next step. Okay, so after the suction filtration, um, right now I've got something that looks kind of like this. It's still kind of wet and clumpy. It would take a decent amount of time on vacuum for you to get uh, a really dry solid to get your accurate, accurate mass um, and a dry solid for your melting point. Um, but what I, I'm just going to use the kind of uh, wet stuff to do our qualitative test that you have, the iron chloride test for phenols. Um, and then after this, you would want to uh, leave it on vacuum a while to make sure it's dry. Okay, so for your, uh, for your iron chloride test and your procedure, um, it has you get, dissolve some, uh, some phenol, salicylic acid, and uh, I went ahead and uh, made a solution of, of aspirin, your product as well. Um, and we're going to demonstrate the iron chloride test. Um, I've also already made a solution that is just a little bit of your crude product here. Um, these are all just in five mils of water. And so five drops of your iron chloride solution. And I'm going to add that to each tube. Okay, so you'll see this is an example of a positive test, the, the iron chloride test for phenols, so the, the OH on the benzene, and you'll see that's a uh, purple tint to it, that's a positive test. And your salicylic acid, I probably added, overestimated and added a little too much, but hopefully you can see that it is a purple tint, it's just a really dark purple. And then your aspirin, whereas where that phenol group has been replaced, you don't have any of the purple color. And your crude reaction uh, doesn't appear to have any phenol group, uh, any of the phenolic starting material remaining. So you succeeded. Um, and the, the rest of the procedure you'll just follow at, um, there's a TLC in the procedure, but you're familiar with that. And uh, your NMR and IR data will be on Harvey. Um, the rest of uh, the rest of what you need for the post lab will will send you data as far as mass recovered and uh, raw RF data for your TLC and uh, melting point as well. So um, that's it for this experiment, and thanks for watching.